Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video we've got a couple of things to discuss as we continue our season preview series here. We're going to be talking about the New Jersey Devils and the New York Islanders from the Metro Division. How they do in the 2023 offseason and how they stack up starting at 2023-2024 season. We'll go to all of that coming up right now. Hello and welcome to another video here at the NTN End End Hockey Channel. Now, as usual, I'm going to kick things off today by discussing the 2023-2024 season preview video for the New Jersey Devils and New York Islanders. As usual, we'll start things off by seeing how those two teams did to, uh, to end the 2023 season. We'll see how they did in the offseason, their additions and subtractions. We'll see their top three picks from the 2023 draft. I'll give you my projected lineup for the 2023-2024 season for each team, and I'll give you my grade for each team's offseason, plus I'll also give you my projected point total for the 2023-2024 season for each of these two teams. So we'll start with the New Jersey Devils here. Uh, the Devils had a pretty good season last year. Not many people expected them to make the playoffs, but they definitely did fantastic. They had a 52-22-8 record for 112 points, which was good enough for second in the Metro, third in the Eastern Conference. They host the Rangers in the first round, they would drop the first two games to dig themselves into a 2-0 hole. They were able to come out from that, put Nikira Shmian in the net. They were able to get three straight wins, winning game 3, 4, and 5 to improve to a 3-2 series lead. The Rangers would force game 7, but then in game 7, the Devils would win to uh, win the series in 7 and overcome a 2-0 hole to start the series to beat their New York rivals and go to round 2. In that second round, they would face the Carolina Hurricanes. They would dig themselves to get into an early 2-0 hole, losing games 1 and 2. They would win game 3 to sort of cut the gap a little bit, but then they would lose games 4 and 5, and they would lose it in 5 games. So they got past the first round for the first time in an extremely long period of time, so that was a win for the Devils. A lot of people didn't even have them making the playoffs, so it was a huge win. But they were stopped by the Carolina Hurricanes, so... Uh, Hopefully they're looking for this offseason to improve on that uh, experience, keep most of their team together, keep on improving this team and have them be a little bit more better next year to hopefully make the Eastern Conference Final. And I think they really did good on that. Uh, the offseason losses and additions, as you can see here, not a ton of either side, but they definitely had some pretty good ones. So on the losses, they lose to Thomas Tatar, who's currently a UFA. They lose Miles Wood, who's signed in Colorado. They lose Igor Sharangovich, who they traded to Calgary. They lose Jesper Volquist, who was traded to Boston. They lose Mason Gertson, who was tra uh, signed with Vegas. They lose Ryan Graves, who signed with Pittsburgh. They lose Riley Walsh, who they traded to Boston. They lost Damon Severson, who went to Columbus after they traded him. Uh, then they lost Mackenzie Blackwood, who they traded to San Jose. And they lost Je Jonathan Bernier, who retired. The additions for that team was also pretty good. They added Chris Tierney. They added Tomasz Nosek. Shane Bowers from the Boston trade, Tyler Toffoli from the Calgary trade, they added Colin Miller in a trade with the Dallas Stars, Colin Foote, uh, they sent from Nashville, and they also brought in Eric Shulgren. So, in my eyes, that's not a bad offseason. Their big things were that they were able to keep both Meyer and Brad around. That was a fantastic move, signing both to eight-year deals after both fit really well in the top six. I think that was a fantastic move, and the Devils not having to move at least one of those guys. So, in my eyes... Those were fantastic moves from the Devils to begin with. And then if you look at what they did, did elsewhere. They lose Tatar Wood and Sharon Govich. All decent middle six forwards, but replaceable. They also lose Jesper Bogfist, Mason Gertson, who weren't really established NHL forwards at this point in time. Uh, they add T Tierney, no stick, who I think should definitely be challenging for like fourth line roles this year. And then they add Tyler Toffoli. Toffoli could, uh, had a lot more points than any one of Wood Tatar or Sharon Govich. So, in my eyes, that's a fantastic addition and really improves that top nine. You add a guy like Alex Holtz into that mix in the uh, four group, and you got yourself a solid top nine. Uh, defensively, they do lose Ryan Graves, which was a little bit of a letdown, as well as Damon Steverson. Uh, both those guys were pretty good fourth and fifth defenders for the Devils last year. They only bring in Colin Miller and Cal Foote, who should both be challenged for like six, seventh roles in that team. But the big improvements for that team will be Luke Hughes should definitely be able to take over Ryan Graves' role. And if he can make it out of the uh, training camp, Simone Nemec should definitely be able to replace what Damon Severson did. And even if Nemec doesn't make the team out of training camp, uh, you have Miller, you have Foote, you have Smith, you have a ton of other options on that defensive end. So... The defense doesn't look that bad if you factor in all the youngsters who are going to be having a chance at the NHL spot. Goaltending-wise, 
Blackwood lost his backup role as the season went on to Schmid, so losing him is not really that big of a deal. Bernier was basically injured the entire season, losing him is not that big of a deal. And then they had Eric Schalgren, who showed in Toronto, who can be definitely a really solid third string goaltender. So you have Schalgren and Dawes as your third and fourth string goalies behind Schmid and Vanacek. You're fine there on the goaltending side. In my eyes, a fantastic offseason. The top three picks were the Devils in the 2023 draft. Uh, they had their own pick, number 26 overall, in the second round, taking Lenny Hamina Aho. Uh, they had their own pick, number 26 overall, in the fourth round, taking right winger Squires. And then they had their own pick, number 26 overall, in the fifth round, taking right shot defenseman Cheslock. So they did not have a ton of draft capital, just like some of the other teams we've been talking about. Given the fact they were a team who moved a lot of draft capital going into the trade line to improve that team. But with the pieces they did have, I think they definitely had a pretty good draft. Not a bad one, but they made do with the picks that they did have. So a pretty good job there by the Devils. My current 2023-2024 projected lineup for the New Jersey Devils, as you can see here, I have Timo Meyer playing on the top line with Jack Hughes and Tyler Toffoli to start the season. I have Jesper Bratt playing with Nico Heischer and Dawson Mercer on the second line. I have Alex Holtz playing with Eric Halla and Andre Palat on the third line. Look at that top nine. That's a fantastic top line and probably one of the best in the NHL. And then you have Tomasz Nosek playing with Michael McLeod and Nathan Bastian on the fourth line. That, that four group looks scary to uh, play against. Defensively, n not maybe as good as last year with Graves and Sederson, but a pretty good lineup nonetheless. In my eyes, I have Siegenthaler playing with Hamilton on the top pair. I have Luke Hughes playing with John Marino on the second pair. And I have Kevin Ball playing with Colin Miller on the third pair. I have Simone Nemec just missing out and instead of him being a spare have him starting the AHL but if there's injuries or if he's definitely just tearing up in the AHL I think he could definitely make a chance at an NHL roster spot you have Vanacek as your 1A you have Schmid as your 1B they both did pretty well last year I think you continue to run with those two guys then you have Lazar, Tierney and Brendan Smith as your three uh, spares and this team will be cap compliant so in my eyes this team looks scary Absolutely scared. I think even though they had 112 points in last year and surprised a lot of people, if they can stay healthy, that team, I think, improves and does a lot better than last year. So in my eyes, for the New Jersey Devils, at this point in time, I currently have them finishing with 55-20-7 record. Not a, a bad record. For 117 points. First in the Metro, first in the Eastern Conference, and in my eyes, at this point in time, the President's Trophy winning team. I definitely think the Devils have that capability in them right now. That top nine looks scary. The depth on that team now looks scary. Their defense, if Hughes and Nemec both get into the lineup and both produce uh, to the expectations they could as rookies, that defense looks scary. The Vanacek Schmid tandem, maybe not the best in the league, but a decent tandem nonetheless. And in my eyes, if Vanacek and Schmid can provide pretty good goaltending, that team is just going to be a, a powerhouse at this point in time. So in my eyes, I have the Devils being first in the Metro, first in the East, first in the league, and I have them being the President's Trophy winners. So definitely, I think the Devils are going to be a scary team to face this season, and I definitely think the Devils are going to be fantastic. So in my eyes, I have them having an A- minus offseason. They did not do half bad. I know they lost Severson and Graves, but they lost those two guys knowing that they're going to have Hughes and Nemec in the lineup, if not this year, then next year. Uh, they lose Blackwood, who didn't do fantastic. Shalgren's a really good third-string goalie. I think that's a fantastic upgrade on Blackwood. Then on the four group, sure, you lose Wood, you lose Tatar, you lose Sharon Govich. But you have the depth on that forward group already. You keep Meyer, which was a win. You keep Bratt, which was a win. You add to Foley, who's another solid top six forward. You, If Alex Holtz can take a top nine spot, he's going to be a fantastic addition there this year. In my eyes, that Devils team improved majorly. They were able to keep Meyer and Bratt around. They add to Foley. Uh, Miller and Foot are going to add some decent depth on that team. Shelgren's going to be a solid third stringer competing with Dawes. In my eyes, this Devils team definitely really did improve. I loved what they did this offseason. So, in my eyes, an A-minus offseason for that team. A really good season there for the Devils. And in my eyes, they just did fantastic. So, going over to the New York Islanders after doing the Devils. Uh, last year's didn't really go fantastic. Uh, but they did make the playoffs. The Islanders were able to get back to the playoffs. They have a 42-31-9 record for 93 points. Fourth in the Metro Division. Small card in the East. 
they were to go to Carolina in the first round. They would dig themselves into a 2-0 hole, win game 3 to cut it to 2-1, lose game 4 to go down 3-1, win game 5 to go down 3-2, and then lose game 6 to lose the series in 6 games. So, not bad. I don't think a lot of people had the Islanders. I mean, I did, but I don't think many people had the Islanders being the Carolina Hurricanes, even though the Carolina Hurricanes had some offensive issues. So, definitely, I do think that a lot of people did have Hurricanes being the Islanders, and the Canes were the better team. So, even though Strokin's a solid goaltender, he was not able to help that team get to the second round. So, definitely a really bad blow there for the New York Islanders. But then after that, they went into this offseason. A lot of people said they needed more offense. They were definitely had some scoring uh, problems in the playoffs. Definitely did not do really well there. So, what did they do this offseason? Basically nothing. If you look at the offseason additions and subtractions list over here, they really didn't do much. Their losses, they lose Richard Panic, to, who's a UFA right now. Uh, I think he signed overseas. They lose Zach Parise, who's currently a UFA. Uh, still sounds like he's contemplating his options between retirement and possibly returning. Uh, they lost Parker Weatherspoon, who definitely got into a couple of games towards the end of the season, to Boston. They lose Bold Wild, who was a decent prospect uh, to UFA status. They lose Corey Schneider, who was a decent third string goalie to UFA status. They lose Josh Bailey to trade him away, uh, being a, basically a 13th forward, making too much money on that team. They trade him to Chicago to clear up some cap space. So, th not too many offseason losses, but their additions. Uh, Julian Gauthier, who's a good 13th, 14th forward. Carson Kuhlman, who's a good 13th, 14th forward. That's it. They did not really add anything at all. They kept around Pierre Engvall on a strange seven-year, $3 million AAV deal. They kept around Scott Mayfield on a seven-year, $3.5 million AAV deal. They kept around Simon Vailamov on a four-year deal with the AAV of $2.75 million. And then the best thing I think the Islanders did this offseason was to sign Ilya Sorokin to an eight-year extension at just over $8 million. So to get Sorokin on that contract, pretty good. But really, everything else was not overly... Impressive, in my opinion. Keeping Engvall, who's a good bomb 6 floor in my opinion, on a 7-year, $3 million deal is a little bit confusing. Mayfield's a really good third player defenseman, so if they want to re-sign him, I definitely think that's really good. But the sign for 7 years is a little bit surprising. Uh, Verlomov's a decent backup at this point in time, but the sign for 4 years when he's pushing 40 years old is not a great move, in my opinion, for the Islanders. So in my eyes... A really confounding offseason for the Islanders. They were supposed to improve that forward group, and they really didn't. They lose Bailey, they get Goche and Coleman to replace him. That's basically their extent of the offseason. They have their defense is pretty good still. Their goaltending is still fantastic. Even though I think Varlamov's contract's not great, I think it should be go okay for the next little while. But that forward group still does not look fantastic. And I think until I see some changes on that forward group, I really don't have much faith with the Islanders replicating this past year's record. So, in my eyes, for the Islanders, they had their top three picks in the 2023 draft. Just like most of these teams, they don't have a fantastic amount of picks. Uh, they had the number 17th pick in the second round, taking center, left winger, right winger, Danny Nelson in the second round, which I think was a pretty good deal. In the fourth round, number 17th overall, they took left winger Nermi. Decent player. Uh, in the fifth round, 17th overall, they took center Gill, who's once again another decent player. So they picked some decent players with their picks. Nothing flashy, but then again, they didn't have much draft capital, so they made do with what they had. So in my eyes, decent drafting. Uh, my current 2023-2024 projected lineup for the New York Islanders, as you can see here. I have Anders Lee being on the top line with Matt Barzell and Oliver Wallstrom. I have Brock Nelson playing on the second line with Bo Horvat and William Dufour. I have the third line being Hudson Fashion with Jean Gabriel Pajot and Kyle Palmieri. And I have the fourth line being Pierre Engvall with Casey Zizekas and Kyle Clutterbuck. I have the defense being Pelican Pulak, Roman Alvin Dobson, and then Samuel Bulduk with Scott Mayfield. I have the goaltending once again being Sorokin and Varlamov. Not too much of a surprise there. I have Matt Martin, Julian Goche, Sebastian Ajo's the spares. I could see Martin be uh, on that fourth line again and Fashing possibly be a spare, but. Definitely, that would be a cap compliant roster. So, in my eyes, the defense is still aging and it's still not where it needs to be. Uh, I put Dufour in the lineup. I think he, just, he stands a good chance to get in there. And I think this Alice team is going to need some younger guys like Dufour or Wallstrom or Simone Holmstrom even to make the roster this year to have some opportunities to be really good offensively because Barzil is still a really good forward, but you have Lee's an older forward, uh, Palmieri's an older forward, Pajot's an older forward. 
Uh, Horvat had a fantastic year last year. Can you really replicate that? So I have a lot of questions about the Sounders offense. They're still going to be good defensively. They're still going to be good in net. Sorokin's fantastic. Barlow's pretty good. In my opinion, they're still going to be good in those situations. But I do have a lot of problems with their forward group. So because of that problems with the forward group, at this current point in time, I have the Islanders. My projected 23-24, I mean, they could add another forward to the mix before the season starts, maybe change things up a little bit, maybe this uh, affects my point total predictions, but for the time being, I have them finishing with a 38-35-9 record for an 85 points, 6th in the Metro Division, and 13th in the Eastern Conference for 8 less points than they did last year. So, just like if you guys remember a couple weeks ago we talked about Detroit, I have them finishing with the exact same record as the Detroit Red Wings, 85 points, a couple of points to have a playoff spot, not as much as they had last year. I had them finishing not too far away from what they did last year, but in my opinion, Sorokin was a, a, a Vesna level caliber goalie again last year. He's probably going to be able to do it again this year. That defense is still pretty solid, but in my opinion, I, I still am not convinced about that offense. If they can uh, maybe add another forward, either in season or maybe uh, before the season starts, to improve that forward group, Maybe it changes my mind, but at this point in time, I have no faith in the offense, and I, I really do think it may be a team to struggle this season offensively. So, in my eyes, uh, offseason-wise, I give them a C, really average offseason. They didn't really lose much, but they also didn't really add much. I mean, they kept around Engvall, they kept around Varlamov, they kept around Mayfield. The Shrokin deal was really a decent addition there for them, but they add Gochin, uh, Kuhlman, they get rid of Josh Bailey. They also lose a little bit of depth on their forward group, defensive end, third string goaltender. Not really a fantastic offseason, in my opinion. See it as a pretty good rating, in my opinion, for the, what the Islanders have accomplished this offseason. And I definitely think that if they had just added maybe one scoring forward who could help fit in their top six, top nine, help them a little bit more, I think they would have had a little bit of a better offseason. But in my eyes, they really didn't have that much of, but good of an offseason. So, really confounding offseason for Islanders, but a really stellar offseason for the Devils. So definitely, love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Do the Devils warrant an A-minus rating and the Islanders a C rating for their offseasons? Definitely love to hear your thoughts about that. Uh, how do you think the Devils and Islanders offseason went? Was it a good offseason for the Devs? Was it a good offseason for the Islanders? Was it a little bit confusing? Uh, do you think the Islanders are going to miss the playoffs? have a little bit of a worse season than last year with the way the roster is constructed right now? And do you think the Devils could possibly be a President's Trophy winning team this upcoming season, as I think? Definitely, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. But that's all I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video, and if you really like to, remember to subscribe down below. I also do a blog talking about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that, so definitely check that out. I have a link to that in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.